viewers, welcome to Fusion Mobile Mathematics Clinic. Today we will be taking a topic, indices, logarithm and sums. But first we will look at indices. What are indices? Indices are numbers that have power. For instance, 3 raised to the power 2, 10 raised to the power 5, x raised to the power 3. These are numbers with powers. Now the powers are called index. For instance, if we have 3x raised to the power 2, this 2 is called the index, it's called the power also, it's also called logarithm. Later on, we'll be treating logarithm, we'll understand this better. X is called the base, while 3 is called the coefficient. Now, we'll look at the laws guiding operations in indices. Laws of indices. The first law we'll be looking at is x raised to the power a multiplied by x raised to the power b, which is equal to x raised to the power a plus b. For instance, if we have 2 raised to the power 2 multiplied by 2 raised to the power 3, this will give us 2 raised to the power 2 plus 3, which is 2 raised to the power 5. Second law. We have as x raised to the power a divided by x raised to the power b. This will give us x raised to the power a minus b. For instance, if we have x raised to the power 5 divided by x raised to the power 3, this will give us x raised to the power 5 minus 3, which is x raised to the power 2. Third law, if we have x raised to the power a brackets B. It will give us x raised to the power A multiplied by B, which is x raised to the power AB. Give for instance, if we have x raised to the power 2, bracket 3. So the two powers will multiply themselves, so we have x raised to the power 2 times 3, which is x raised to the power 6. We have another law, which is x raised to the power 0 is equal to 1. It's important to know that every number or any number that has a power of zero is equal to one. Let's move to the next law. The next law says that if we have x raised to the power minus a, it will give us one over x raised to the power a. Give for instance, if we have x raised to the power minus one. X raised to the power minus one will be one over x raised to the power one. But we do not write the one. The one is arbitrary, so we remove it. But we know that it's x raised to the power one. If we have, for instance, um, one all over two raised to the power minus two, this will give us one all over one all over two, which is the same thing as two all over one. This means that whenever we have a fraction which has a negative power, we turn the fraction upside down. So for the fifth law, we have x raised to the power minus a, which is equal to 1 all over x raised to the power a. So give for instance, we have x raised to the power minus 1, which will give us 1 all over x raised to the power 1. But we do not write the 1 because it's an arbitrary number, so we remove it. So, but we know that it is raised to power 1. Another example, if we have 2 all over 3 raised to power minus 2. This will give us 1 all over 2 all over 3, all raised to power 2, obeying the law. So, this will give us 3 all over 2 raised to power 2. Now, it's important to note that whenever you have a fraction that has a negative number, all you need to do 
is to turn the fraction upside down, still affecting the power, but removing the negative sign. Now, for the sixth law, we have x raised to the power 1 over b equals to root b x. Give for instance, we have x raised to the power 1 over 2. x raised to the power 1 over 2 will be square root of x. Notice that we do not put 2. Whenever we have a square root, we do not put the 2 for this one. But if we have x raised to the power 1 over 3, we'll have root, third root of x. Let's look at the seventh law. For the seventh law, we have x raised to the power a over b equal to root x raised to the power a b. Or we have it as root b x all raised to the power a. Give for instance, if we have 8 raised to the power 2 over 3, this will give us root root third root of 8 bracket 2, affecting this one. So this will give us when we find the third root of 8, it will give us 2, because 2 times 2 times 2 will give us 8. So this will be 2, but the power is still there, so it will give us 2 raised to the power 2, which is what? 4. Now, an additional law we, we add to make work easy, we have an 8 law. And this one, if we have x, y, all raised to the power 8, this is the same thing as x raised to the power a multiplied by y raised to the power a. Give for instance, we have 6 raised to the power, raised to the power x. This is the same thing as 2 times 3 or raised to the power x equals to 2 raised to the power x multiplied by 3 raised to the power x. So these are the laws of indices. With these laws, we'll be able to solve any question on indices. Now we're going to be looking at equations involving indices. In this segment, we're going to be looking at some methods that will make this easy. The first method is called the expression method. Under this, we'll be looking at expressing the equations having the same base or the same power. B, for instance, if we have 3x equals to 81, for it to have the same base, we have to change this to 3 raised to power a number that will be equal to 81. And what is that number? That will be 3 raised to power 4. So they have the same base carrying the power. So this base will cancel themselves as we have x equals to 4, solving the equation. Also, if we have another example like x raised to the power 2 equals to 4. Now, for this one, we want to express it to have the same power. So we have x raised to the power 2 equals to 2 raised to the power 2. That is 2 times 2, which will give us 4. So that's 2 raised to the power 2. So since they have the same power, we can cancel them out and we have what x equal to 2. The second method we'll be looking at is what we call the reverse process. Under this process, we will be reversing the operation in question. Give for instance, if we have a power. The reverse of the power will be what? The root. If we have a root, the reverse of root will be what? Power. Give for instance, if we have x raised to the power 2 equals to 4. So the reverse is a root. And for this one, it's square root. So we have square root in both sides equals to square root of 4. So square root of x squared will be x, and square root of 4 will be what? 2. Give for example, if we have cube root of x 
equals to 2. The reverse process will be power. Since we have a cube root, so the power will be cube, a cube. So we have cube root raised to the power 3. So that we cancel out the cube root. And this here also will be raised to the power 3. Doing the same for both sides. So this will give you x equals to 2 raised to the power 3 will give us 2 times 2 times 2, which is what? 8. For our third method, this is called power reciprocal. Power reciprocal. This is the multiplicative inverse of the power. Give for instance we have x raised to the power half equal to 4. So the re reciprocal of half is 2. So we multiply 2 to both sides. That's the power. Let me write it. Multiply 2 to both to the power of both sides. So we have x raised to the power half multiplied by 2, and this place, 4, you know it's raised to the power 1, but multiplied by 2. So this will cancel this out. We have x equals to 4 raised to the power 2, which is what? x equals to 16. So these are the methods that will make solving equations that are involving indices easy. examples from our jam pass question. The first question is simplify 16 raised to the power minus half times 4 raised to the power minus half times 27 raised to the power 1 over 3. Take it from the 2008 pass question. So let's take it. 16 times 4 raised to the power minus half times 27 raised to the power 1 over 3. Recall that x raised to the power minus a is equal to 1 all over x raised to the power a. So that means that this will become 1 over 16 raised to the power half multiplied by 1 over 4 raised to the power half. This remains the same. When we have a fractional index, that is, we have raised to the power half, it now becomes 1 all over square root of 16 times 1 all over square root of 4 times cube root of 27. Square root of 16 is 4 times 1 all over square root of 4 is 2. Then the cube root of 27, that is the number that you multiply 3 times to give you 27, will be what? 3. Then we multiply. 1 times 1 times 3 will be 3. 4 times 2, 8. So that is how we solve question 1. Let's move over to question 2. For our question 2, we have solve 5 raised to the power 2 bracket x minus 1 plus bracket times 5 raised to the power x plus 1 equals to 0 0.4. Taking from our 2009 jam pass question. Let's solve it. Question 2. So we have 5 raised to the power 2 minus 1. Equal to 0 0.04. Now, on this side of the equation, since it's an equation, we know that when we are multiplying two numbers with the same base, for different powers, we add the parts. So we have 5 raised to the power 2x then plus the power of the second one, x plus 1, equal to this 0 0.04 is the same thing as 4 all over 100. 4 will go here 1, 4 will go here 25. So we bring it down 1 over 25. While on this side, let's simplify the power. 
we have 5 raised to the power, we open the bracket, this will be 2x minus 2 plus x plus 1. On this side, this will become 1 over 5 raised to the power 2. On this side, 2x, so we have 5 raised to the power 2x plus x. 2x plus x will give us 3x. Minus 2 plus 1 will give us minus 1. So this will give us 5 raised to the power 3x minus 1 equals to this a reverse process will give us 5 raised to the power minus 2. Remembering our negative index. So now that we have the same base, we cancel out. So we have 3x minus 1 equals to minus 2. We collect the light like by carrying minus 1 over to this side. It becomes 3x equals to minus 2. When it comes here, it becomes plus. So this will be minus 2 plus 1, which is minus 1. And this will give us x equals to minus 1 all over 3. And that's how we could answer question 2. Let's move over to question 3. We are finding the value of 2 bracket 3 raised to the power 2x minus 1 close the bracket equals to 162. 2007. Past question. Let's solve it. This will give us 2 x minus 1 equals to 162. To simplify this, we can divide both sides by, by 2. That is, these two dividing this side. So it becomes 3 raised to the power 2x minus 1 equals to 162 all over 2. 2 we go here 8, we go here 1. So we have equals to 81. Now, we said earlier that when we want to solve, we can express both sides into the same base. So 81, we know that 3 times 3 times 3 times 3, 4 times, will give us 81. So this will give us 3 raised to the power 4. So since they now have the same base, we can cancel the base out. Then equate the power. So this will be 2x minus 1 equals to 4. Then we take the like terms. Minus 1 comes to the other side. We have 4. When it comes here, it becomes plus. It becomes 5. Then x will now be 5 all over 2, which could be also 2 whole number 1 all over 2. That's our answer. Question number 4. We have 16 all over 81 raised to the power 1 over 4 divided by 9 over 16 raised to the power minus 1 over 2. Now let's solve it. Question number 4. 16 all over 81 raised to the power 1 over 4 divided by 9 over 16 all over raised to the power minus 1 over 2. Now to solve this, we can see on this side that we have a negative sign. And we said earlier that whenever we have a negative sign and we have a fraction take carrying the sign, we turn the fraction upside down. So we have 16 all over 9 still raised to the power half. Divided 16 over 81 raised to the power 1 over 4. Now since we have this we can now affect the fractional index. This one will give us root 16 over 81, the fourth root, divided by square root of 16 all over 9. Now, the fourth root of 16 is 2. So we have 2. And the fourth root of 81 is 3. Divided by the square root of 16 is 4. All over the square root of 9 as 3. Now, we already said that when you have division, the division sign will change to multiplication and the fraction will turn upside down. So we have 2 over 3, multiplication sign, then the turning up upside down of the fraction will be 3 all over 4. Then 3 we go here 1, 3 we go here 1, 2 we go here 1, 2 we go here 2. So we multiply. 
one all of one multiplied by one, which is one, one multiplied by two, which is two. So that is how we solve questions in indices.